All right, KISS Army, welcome to the KISS FAQ Podcast. Thank you for giving us your time today and letting us into your head. I hope we don't do any damage. This is a KISS-related podcast by the board for the board. We hope that you enjoy. We'd love you to support this show. Please like, follow, and subscribe to us on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. Your likes and subscription helps us to grow and attract interviews and content. So please retweet and share our posts. Your contributions are appreciated. Welcome to episode 450 of the KISS FAQ Podcast. I'm your host, Julian Gill, admin on the FAQ message board. It's the usual gang today. No Daniel, he's sleeping, and I've just told the guys it sucks staying up that late to do a podcast episode. Daniel, you rule, because it's even later when you stay up um, during the holidays to join us for the episode. So after going through that myself while I was in England, um, you're mental. But you're Scandinavian, so we shouldn't really be too surprised. So, regular gang today, 69th Blizzard Ken, St. Louis Kiss, Lonnie, and Marcus Almighty Mark. Uh, we don't really have a topic set up yet. Uh, you know, we're finding our feet on this podcasting thing. It's a little bit more complex than it seems. Uh, you know, just getting together with your pals and talking Kiss and pressing record and hoping for the best. Um, but we will be doing the death match soon. Want to do that on a Saturday so that Daniel can participate a more consumer friendly hour and we'll probably do that live so we can't have that interfering with some of the sports that are coming up over the next few weeks um news this week big news jeff beck without jeff Mm -hmm. beck we don't get a lot of kiss we don't get aerosmith we don't get a lot of the influences that are apparent in many other bands that our age group listens to from the 70s of course um guitarist who was in a plethora of bands, you know, those first two Beck albums, wow, mm-hmm. the number of people that that influenced, that music, the stuff he did with the Yardbirds, with Jimmy Page, I mean, Jimmy Page and Jeff Beck in the same band, I mean, just go mm-hmm. figure, the stuff he did with Stewart, just absolutely monstrous, Kiss Online, of course, posted nice comments from both Gene and Paul, Ace had nice stuff to say, or Ace's girlfriend had nice things to say, um, I, I mean, it's just absolutely staggering, and just a reminder that all that talent, all of those guys that we've listened to, and the bands that we've enjoyed the getting on, enjoy that mm-hmm. music enjoy the opportunity to see them in concert if you do get the chance because it really everything is so fleeting these days um other news kiss has announced a date in may in the u.s that's out your way isn't it lonnie yeah not too far dayton's about mm, about four hours away it's not bad so that's a festival right yeah it's a festival over memorial day weekend so we're still waiting. You know, Doc suggested that more, like the final batch of Kiss dates are coming. We'll have to wait and see if those appear before Dubai shows up. Um, <laughs> it's just, it's just, just for you, Ken. Um, and and that's that's really all I can think of, unless anyone else has anything they want to chime in on. Anyone? Well, I'm just wanted to just put in my two cents about Jeff Beck. I mean. That was that's a huge loss. I mean, I got into him pretty late. My my introduction to him, ironically, was Guitar Shop. I remember seeing that uh, album cover with the Strat on the car hoist up there in the garage there, and I was always like, "What the hell is that?" Like I was, I was inter- in- instantly taken to it because of that album cover, and I checked it out and was like, "Oh, it was pretty good." And then I I stumbled upon Truth, that album with Rod on vocals, and that was, then that was it. I was like, "Whoa, okay, this is." This is something else. It's like next level guitar players. It was really good. So, you know, and then I got all the other albums, Becola and all those other ones and stuff like that. So, uh, big, big loss. And I, I was telling, uh, I think it was my sister the other day, uh, yesterday, that the Facebook, every other post I saw was about well, Jeff Beck. I mean, the amount of people that he's actually impacted is staggering. So, uh, and a good point that Julian made, you know, Time is running out. The hours, the sand through the hourglass is slowly ending on people that we know and love in this business. So take take advantage of, you, of it while you can when you can see these people. Yeah, way to keep it uplifting. Um, all right, let's let's <laughs> jump into some topics from the board. I mean, there there's quite a lot of conversations going on straight out of the bat. Lonnie, 
Vinny Vincent, did you see his uh, pricing price list for the event um, and some of the things that are going to be available? What do you think? What do you think about what's going to go down with the pinwheels and salad this weekend? I think it's this weekend anyway. It's it's funny, you know. I mean, I guess you can you can do or you can charge whatever you want, and if if people are going to pay it, um, and and I guess the Vinny faithful have proven that they will like, and, and, and I think he does that knowing that it's not going to be a large event. It's going to be a smaller group of geez, just Uber Vinny fans that will pay whatever, because they basically worship me and will, will charge whatever I want. So I don't know. I mean, it, it was expensive in Atlanta when, when we went to see him, Julian, it, it wasn't cheap. Um, it wasn't to this extent, but it's um, to each their own, I guess. If if that's what no one's telling you how to spend your money or what to do with your money, and I'm not going to tell anyone, you know, what to do with their money either. If you want to go, that's great. If you think, hey, that's way too expensive for me, I'm not going to take a chance on Vinny, or I've been burned by Vinny in the past, you know, that that's fine too. So it's up to you. You know, pe- people may think it's ridiculous, but I spend and what, what I spend on gas money and football tickets driving to Cincinnati every other week in the fall. So, you know, to each their own. You know, what what you want to do with your money is is up to you. And what and, and if you know he can charge what he wants if people are gonna pay. Yeah, and I'm I'm not mocking the catering, by the way, because I had a salad for lunch, and there's nothing wrong with salad, uh, or the pinwheels, which are are good snack food, and that that's fine. And that podcast, which you did show, again, that's a fan, that's a fan just like us doing a show her way. Um, you know what I I do think is nuts is some of this pricing, and because it's a lot of this is creatures. Can I'm going to go to your opinion next, but I do want to. Uh, just read some of the items that you can purchase at this Vinnie Vincent event yes. on top of paying that admission. So the Mega Rare 10th Anniversary Lick It Up Kiss Tour Books Creatures Cover on a Lick It Up Tour Book. No, that's exactly... No. There's nothing wrong with That's not an error. It's nothing special. That is how they are. Uh, brand new with original insert. $3,000 autograph. <laughs> $3,000. <000. coughs> <laughs> Original Kiss logo guitar pick used by Vinnie Vincent at the infamous Kiss Rio show. Well, prove it. Um, <laughs> no. This is a hard rock display piece for certain. $5,000. Yeah, there's some pickpocketing going on there. Gene Simmons' Rio pick will also be there. Um, Vinnie Vincent saved these picks as a memento from that historic event. 3500 Super rare Chris Creatures tour itinerary binder hardcover with Kiss logo on cover um, with Creatures black and white photo autographed by Eric, Vinny, Gene, and Paul. Now that is actually worth some money. That's kind of cool. Yeah, that's dollar, 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 which means if you have to ask, I can't afford it. There will also be out of print Vinny Vincent CDs autographed for 500 um, Super rare Kiss Creatures tour <laughs> itinerary. Sure so. Oh, that's the same thing. Uh, Clear. Vinny Vincent boots. Well, like bootlegs? God, okay, here's the one. Here we go. Original set of Polaroid test shots from the Creatures Tour book. 17 in all. $35,000. <laughs> Original set of Polaroid test shots from the Lick It Up Tour book. 32 in all. 32000 Does come with rights? Oh, um <clears throat> Vinnie Vincent Choker. I guess some people might bring their own. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, Give me the money for that box set. Give me yeah. the money for the box set. No. Uh, <laughs> autograph photos from the table, $250. Uh, you can have a selfie with Vinny for 100 Album That's signings, 300 Autograph for history book, 1000 but also very rare original Euphoria T-shirts will be a mail. Uh, Four hundred fifty bucks for those. A, th- um, a thousand for the history signing. What about baseballs? What the hell am I gonna do with my baseball, <laughs> or my or my creature super deluxe edition? All right, voice of reason, have at it. Either Vinny 
really needs the money badly or he wants to keep his stuff <laughs> because no one's going to pay that much money for for that stuff. Maybe uh, not the $30,000, but there, there are Uber Vinny fans that go to these things or else he wouldn't true. continue to have them. That's true, and that's fine. They they pay to see him, but uh, I, not everyone has that kind of money no. to just throw around. That's a, that's a lot of money that you you know you're talking about um, for those items. So I I guess he needs a lot of money. I mean, I saw the other thing about he posted. Uh, there was that thing on the forum saying of showing uh, saying that he recorded is recorded like. I don't know how many albums worth of new material and stuff like that, and can't wait for everyone to hear it. And, and it's just—I mean, uh, has he said that before? Yes, I, I think. Um, and we don't see anything or hear anything, or you know, there's no product. Um, the only product is these T-shirts and pics and books and photos that are way, way overpriced. Um, Jeez, you know, if 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 you love your fans, you're not gonna gouge them like that. Well, kiss. Twenty five thousand dollars guitars. Kiss doesn't even go that crazy, except for the, oh, mon- yeah, the, the monster, the monster book. Monster book. Um, that was that was kind of crazy. Dubai. But, uh, <clears throat> I guess. <laughs> what are your thoughts yeah, on yeah. that? Uh, <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> I, I just think it's crazy. Uh, I, you know, it's, we keep seeing the same thing. I, will we ever see a, a, a new record or something from him? Maybe. I don't know. I don't know what he's been doing. Uh, but, you know, you're going to have to prove it at some point. You, you know, you, your talk is cheap, you know. You know, let's, let's see something. Um, put out something, you know. And maybe they'll have a great time at the... I'm sure they will. They, they say they're going to have a... They're gonna rock and stuff, and it sounds like they're gonna have a, almost a concert or something. Uh, <laughs> but or he might stand on top of a tank or something. A mini tank and uh, <laughs> <laughs> crush it or something. But mm. uh, I, I don't know. It's, it's just it's just crazy, and we'll just have to, just have to wait and see again. Uh, wow! Well. If if he comes through on any of these things. Yeah, I know people complain that he wasn't involved in the Creatures of the Night box set. Look at that price list, and now want ask yourself that question again. Why do you think he wasn't involved in anything? Do you think anyone wants to deal with... He, wa- he wanted you, money. I, yeah. I, I've got one Polaroid that you might, you could use, but I want $87,000 million. <laughs> yeah. Right. You know, the, the, this... This is first of all ridiculous. I mean, these prices are just out of the world, out of this world. I mean, yeah, I know, like, like Lonnie said, some of the things might go because you know there's Uber fans that will pay for some of it. But you know what? In one way, maybe he's a genius, Vinny, because maybe he's developing a perfect marketing strategy for us fellow musicians. Maybe the the, the way to go is to you know become a decently known musician. You know. Start your own solo career, then you know when it's done, try to come back, you know, ditch a few concerts that you're supposed to appear at, then you disappear know, for twenty, disappear, years. And, and then <laughs> and then take all the shit that you have from your career and sell it for for hundreds of thousands of dollars. You know, maybe I should start doing that. I'll put I'll book a couple of gigs ten years from now. Don't appear at 20. them. You know, yeah, I won't appear disappear. at them. I'll take money for a box set. Don't send it to anybody. I won't send anything to anyone. Keep all your money. And then after that, I'll start saying, hey, here's this pick. I use this pick to record my third album with. I want $15,000 for it. So maybe maybe people will start buying my shit if I start following the Vinnie Vincent School of Marketing. Because if people honestly fall for some of this stuff, then I feel very sorry for you. Okay, that's all I got to say about that. Yeah, it's easy to mock all this side of things when it comes to Vinny, but people are clearly attending these events, and mm-hmm. you know what? We more, continue to have them. More power to it's more fine. power to you if you go to these events and enjoy them. It's just very difficult for some of us to penetrate <laughs> that price listing and the lack of reality that goes with it, um, as well as the lack of live music that you know provable. Live music. I, 
I'm not going this weekend because I want to remain married. Because if I went to that and started spending that kind of money on merchandise, I would not. <laughs> well, how, how much is it? That's what I'm like. Wow. This would be my last. This be my last visit. What happened to the show. <laughs> <laughs> What's the entry fee to this? Does anybody know? I think it was 500. So I mean, look at I have nothing that's against the cheapest the en- thing you can buy. But that's the thing I have nothing yeah, against the entry fee. I have nothing thing. against going to it. But it's it's those those items that I had the problem with. Not right, but him. The oxygen is her. extra, Mark. That just opens the door. <laughs> you, you, you don't you, you don't get the oxygen, the water, the food, or anything else for free. I, oh, I, okay. Again, I don't know what that includes. I have not purchased a ticket. <laughs> I have no intention of going to one of those events. It's just it's not my deal. You know, I've got the music, which is all I care about no, I don't give a damn about um, music in me yeah you know that, that's 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 just me but for other people go for it you know why don't you see if you can knock him down a thousand on those polaroids <laughs> yeah you yeah. know and and then when he if he says no just fan the benjamins and get mugged his security comes out i believe you found takes your this. phone yeah, well, I think it's no phones allowed, but whatever. Um, yeah. I I like to say I don't care, but since we've just featured it for about ten minutes on the show, we clearly do care, <laughs> and it does uh, trigger us somewhat. It's like Vinny, just put out some new music, please. Just yeah. some music. Put it up on iTunes so I can pay someone else. You get the money, you know. After I get the music, uh, iTunes. You know? We're charging five hundred dollars for CDs this weekend. What are you talking about? Well, it, it's like someone posted a picture of an engineer said mixing the new Vinnie yeah. Vincent record, yeah. and that was two years old. That photo had been posted previously. Oh man! And See had I mean. not Neil said that they had were having a listening party the last time? They had yeah. limos and sushi and a listening party, and it had been sent off for pressing. And what happened to that? Huh? Mm-hmm. With worldwide press as well, I still haven't heard a peep out of that worldwide he, press. You see what I mean? Like, sorry, go on, Ken. I'm just to say, does Vinny secretly work with Landmarks Entertainment? I, I'm kind of wondering now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, he, he he taught them. He's he's the Yoda there. Yeah, he's he's he's, he's, the, yeah, he's the mastermind behind that operation. <laughs> 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 no attention to the man behind the Speaking of landmarks, so let's have a little, since we're just kind of doing some random stuff today. Um, I was, I, it feels like something's coming with, with Kiss, with, with either some, some dates this summer or some more dates this summer. I know there's some dates in Europe this summer or an announcement of, of a quote unquote final show. And it's got me thinking that, it's Kiss. They're going to want to cash in on a final show in every way possible, um, whether it be people in attendance, but more so people who can't attend. And how, with the Dubai thing still looming, can... Dubai and loom in the same fucking sentence. <laughs> pretty, good. Pretty, good. pretty good. Nice. Pretty good. Um, <laughs> how... Can we have pay-per-view packages available to purchase on Kiss Online? And who, in their right mind, would do that? Kiss fans. In their right mind. <clears throat> well, but that, that that answers your question. You know, I mean, would you let, 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 go go around the table? Ken, would you do it again? If they said now that they're doing a final show, let's say Central Park in the middle of summer, in New York. You know, we're Central gonna do it, Park. and we're gonna broadcast it over the internet. You know, live stream. W- will you? Will you commit again? Probably. Well, if it's not, not. <laughs> if it's not, <laughs> it's not landmarks. You know that that outfit that did that thing. Uh, not saying that whoever does the next one is gonna do it right, um, but hopefully they. Well, we didn't learn. So, our so you lesson. Would go I didn't learn and... my lesson, um, but. Uh, yeah, I, I, get, I would probably pay for that stream if it's a final show and I can't be there in person. Uh, yeah, I, though it's going to be recorded and then it's going to be sold later but, and everything. But, you know. But 
would you okay you can purchase the live stream and people who anybody you you got the live stream but would you purchase a package that included exclusive yeah. merch ken yeah i think twice <laughs> <laughs> i would really think twice after you know what happened with the you know dubai thing so, I, I mean i would be absolutely stunned if they did that before this got resolved, like before this Dubai thing gets resolved, if they were to have the balls to announce that again, I think there's something really wrong. That would be balls to put out a pay-per-view for the final Kiss show while their last pay-per-view two plus years ago, people never received merchandise that they ordered. But I could still see it happening. Yeah, because they'll say it's not our fault. Mm -hmm. Right. Neither will this one. Yeah, you know. So, Just, I would not. I I would have a very hard time yeah. of not doing a oh, Rantorama yeah. episode on um, <laughs> if they if they announced it. You could put a quarter in all of us for that. <laughs> no, be, because it is just so infuriating how it has been handled. Again, it goes back to what I've often said is one of the things to doing business is communication and respect and neither have taken place um you know doc has said certain things off kind of on off the record you know those videos that were shared from the yeah. crews where he said that they're taking it paul was asked about it and he said the only thing that he could say under the circumstances he's not going to say get bent i've got the money um <laughs> you know I, you guess he's on it. He's not gonna, Paul Stanley's not going to say that. Of course he's on it. He's going to look into it. I mean, that's like one of the biggest... Whenever someone says to you, you know, you're pissed off about something, I'll look into it. That means just leave me alone <laughs> right yeah. now. Like, because what else can you say after that? That's like that? when I, I make a suggestion to my boss, he always says, yeah, we'll have to think about that. That means no. <laughs> I'll, t I'll, t I'll take that under consideration. <laughs> yeah. So, so no, um, again, get to sound like Prince Harry. I'm going to need an apology. <laughs> you know, I'm going to need, going to need some ownership of this whole fiasco because of how badly it's been handled. And again, it's how everything is handled after the fact makes it worse than it would have been had it been handled initially. And while you can give them some wiggle room for some things not being known or maybe not being able to be communicated, it's gone on far too long now for there to be any um, any way back from the precipice. It's, it's, it's too late. You can't make yourself look good this far into the game. Now prove me wrong. It's true. Motherfuckers. <laughs> yeah, prove, prove Julian wrong. So yeah. you know, uh, Lonnie was talking about the uh, the announcement. Supposedly, by the end of this month, supposedly we're going to hear something about those sixteen or seventeen shows. I don't know why it's one or the other, but uh, uh, and the final date, uh, which is now sounding like maybe the end of the you know the year um, before the so, Christmas fall. Yeah. 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 So. Uh, it'd be interesting to to see what what those date where those dates are like maybe they're sixteen or seventeen major cities that they've toured. Uh, that's all I can think of, um, and of course the final date, but in New York somewhere. I have zero faith in any band that says that this is our final show. Yeah. I, I, oh, just yeah, I, I just do not believe it anymore, and I'm, there's always some way to fudge it. There's the always point. some bullshit I, way of upselling. But I still think we'll play. I still think there's a real possibility we play a final show, even though we know it. Because there's a good chance it won't be. Final but I think end of the road tour. Right, final show of the end of the road <laughs> tour type thing. <laughs> Motley Crue played their last show. Several All years wording, ago. you know what I mean? Uh, uh, we're just mean? saying farewell to this part of the end of the road tour because it's going to be mm. Kiss Fifty. Uh, henceforth, exactly. they didn't have a fraction of Kiss fans trying to convince you. Well, it was just a farewell to this, just like the farewell tour was just a farewell, farewell to Peter and Ace. <laughs> At this point, the end of the road, again, feels like it's already happened for me. Uh, as, again, I'm 
not getting any excitement out of these announcements. Again, I did get, you know, mildly thoughtful about the possibility of England and English dates and then looked at the prices and all that and was just like, forget it. Uh, you know, it's not going to top what I already had at that show with Ken. You know, it, leave on that high point rather than continue flogging that dead horse for the sake mm -hmm. of adding another notch on my belt in terms of the number of Kiss shows I've had. Because it's just not delivering the excitement now. I, I understand that with COVID, it's gone on much longer than anyone anticipated or wanted. That's out yeah. of our control. Um, it's out <clears throat> of their control. But I just can't bring myself. I, I've watched some videos. I go back to watching Kobo 76. I go back to watching, I was watching Lubbock stuff today from 1990. I was like, wow, I've never seen mm. this before. You know, Eric Carr with a guitar, you know, playing Tesla's love song. I'm like, I've never seen that. Like, this is exciting, you know? Meanwhile, to see the same canned crap again, and I only say that because I've seen it so many times that it's no longer got that excitement attached to it. There's still people out there who are excited. Hey, but, go. But the doc said they're going to change the stage just slightly. And the set list. <laughs> and, oh, yeah. And, they said, and well, the set, set list. Changed. I don't trust them. Do, do you believe him any more than Vinnie Vincent's going to release an album? Not really. <laughs> doc, I'm going to deal with Dubai? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, be I believe you. Yeah, here, here's another. Here's some more money. Four months, yeah. 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 So there was a there was a poll on the board. So let's go around and, and do the poll here, since I've touched on it by talking about Lubbock. Um, Sam Loomis, hero or a villain? And no cheating. No going to see what the people on the board thought about that. Get us started, Ken. Hero or villain? I vo I I voted on that poll. I I said hero. Why? I don't know. No. Because, <laughs> we don't know vote. because <laughs> you know, I felt he, you know, he felt he was done wrong, and and obviously we know the whole story, and well, maybe not the whole story, but about selling off to multiple people the same thing and saying that they got the only copy of it and that sort of stuff, and and uh, you know he he had it with it, I guess once once. That he heard, you know, found that out. So uh, he's a hero in the sense of allowing the, you know, us Kiss fans to finally see this material and probably never see the light of day otherwise. Um, so from that standpoint, he's he's a hero from the, you know, putting those out and you know we finally get to enjoy all these things we'd never seen before and or never thought existed. There's many things we would never thought existed, and we're, we've got to see some. Hero. All right, Lonnie. Um, I'm with Ken. I I say hero as well. He's a hero in my eyes because, like, Ken, as to echo Ken, he showed me things that I never knew existed. Thought things I thought I'd never see. And I consider myself. Um, a a big Kiss fan, but an, if it make, if it makes any sense, like a like your average big Kiss fan, where yeah, I have a lot of merch, and you know I, I've gone to a bunch of shows, and I've done the backstage, and and I've done this and I've done that, but I don't consider myself like a. Cause I I know there's just hardcore Uber. collectors, out, Uber hardcore collectors out there, that that pay for this rare stuff and these, you know, unreleased stuff that, that, you know, that, that, if that's your thing, that's great. That's, but I'm not at that point. Um, but yeah, I'm, not, I'm, I'm a huge Kiss fan, but I, so you're already a 17th fan. degree Kiss sure. fan. Right. I consider myself the, av I, maybe, maybe a little, maybe, maybe a little bit above average big Kiss fan because I, am on a kiss podcast every week for Christ's sake. But <laughs> but doesn't care. But, right. But I but, but but I know there's but I know there's KISS fans out there that are way bigger KISS fans than me that spend a whole lot more money on the band than I do. 
um, and have and have this rare shit that I was like that I'd be like, holy shit, I can't believe you own that. But and, and to the, in their eyes, Sam Loomis is probably a villain because they they things that have come out or things that they've paid a lot of money for, then all of a sudden what I paid this money for is worthless because here it is up on YouTube. It's been up on YouTube. A thousand assholes download it. And now they have it in their collection. <laughs> it's true. I mean, in, in, in a lot of people's eyes, <clears throat> me. right. But people like me and Ken are like, Ooh, Ooh, downloading that. That's pretty sweet. Um, you know, right. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, in, in their eyes, I'm sure, Lewis is a villain, but to me, I was like, "That's amazing! I never thought I'd see that." <clears throat> and at the same time, too, we and I've talked about this before. How 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 much of like 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 we ate up? We just ate up that Loomis time when that was going on. There's still a crap ton of Kiss fans out there, a crap ton of Kiss fans out there that don't even know what Sam Loomis YouTube channel is. Like my brother has no idea what I'm talking about. <clears throat> He's like, you're an idiot. What are you even talking about? <laughs> Largo 75. What? I don't even know what that is, Lonnie. You know, it, it's like, you're such, an, you're such a nerd. And you don't even know what that is. So I think, I think this is a long drawn out answer, but I think, <laughs> I think Loomis is, is a villain in people's eyes that, that paid a lot of money for the stuff that they thought they were getting. Oh, uh, Loomis just, Oh. Yeah. Oh, wait a bit. No, I think Lonnie got gooched. Yeah, he got. I, she more likely he got Netflixed. Oh, yeah. his wife is Netflixing right now. Yeah. Playing All right, that. Mark. Let, let's move on to you with hero or villain. Uh, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna say a hero. Oh, there Should we go. Cut me off. <laughs> did did, did you? you. Uh, did you can did you finish with your thing or do you want me to Julian cut me off? It was too long winded. Go ahead, Mark. Okay. Sorry, we've lo- we've for... lost your video. Anyway, we got like... the point totally though. <laughs> but I'll, I'm just gonna say this. I'm gonna say hero mainly because, you know, I got to see stuff that I think otherwise I would not have been able to see. You know, I mean, I I'm not one of those collectors. Just like how Lonnie was, you know, saying very eloquently before he got cut off that, you know. There's there's a there's levels of Kiss fandom, obviously, and I'm at that level probably around where Lonnie is maybe, you know, where I know quite a bit of stuff. I have a bit of stuff, but nowhere near some of these people that I see on Facebook who have the whole rooms or whole basements devoted to Kiss stuff, like stuff that I couldn't even believe that they'd have in their house, like that takes up their whole, you know, lower end of their home, you know, and that's great if you're into that, and that's fantastic. But, you know, I'm just going to say this, you know, if if you're upset about the fact that these kind of things get leaked and, you know, you dropped big money for it and now it's, you know, no longer of any value for you. If you're considering your collection to be your 401k, then that's your mistake, because anybody who does that, I think, is foolish. Don't 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 think that your collection is going to be your retirement fund. It's the same thing, thing like these people who collect records, these audiophile people who think that when I'm going to be 20 years from now, you know, retired, I'm going to sell off all these records. They're going to be worth hundreds of dollars. No, you know what? It could just happen like this, where vinyl becomes worthless in, in a dollar bin again, and all that money that you dropped for those blue note records and all this stuff will be worth nothing again. So if you're collecting stuff strictly on the premise of boy, I'm going to have big money when I retire and I sell this all off. You're in big fucking trouble, let me tell you, because some of these things will be worth nothing, you know, down the line, you know. And I'm not saying that I hope that to happen, but I'm saying don't depend on that, you know, in in that sort of framework. I I think that it's just better to collect if you like it. If you're happy with the stuff, great, you know. But don't expect it to not these things not to leak. It's gonna be it's gonna be bound to happen. It's somebody's gonna do it somewhere down the line. I don't think anything is off limits in my eyes. You know that's why I've never really went in, you know, head first into the whole collecting of these really really hard to find pieces of video because I I know if I drop you know three thousand dollars now for it in a year's time I might be kicking myself in the head because somebody will leak it. You know. Is it worth it to me? You know, not really. Yeah. 
All right, do, do I have to be the contrarian here and call him a villain? No, it, obviously uh -oh. I'm in a sli slightly different predicament to, sure. to you lot. And let me just a explain this little side story before I answer. In the middle of my trip to England, I received a threatening text from someone mm -hmm. about a topic on the FAQ uh, that they wanted removed or else they were going to character assassinate me as they've tried to do other people. Um, but straight out of the Austin Powers evil villain, the end of the text was, that was a voice text, excuse the typos, <laughs> which just made it impossible to take the rest of the threat seriously. Right. Um, I mean, that's almost something that should be in a freaking movie, like Spinal Tap being mocked. Um, right. I'm not taking down topics uh, on the FAQ talking about this stuff because it's all over YouTube where other people can read what's going on anyway. So... I stayed out of this as much as I possibly could. Um, I didn't buy the stuff when it became available. Like I've mentioned, because I got distracted with the finishing the Aerosmith book, and also I wasn't that interested with video. I can't take my audio hat off. Uh, video has always been a nightmare in you know the the rare collector circles it, and it was a fair amount i mean i can't remember exactly i think it was six grand was the asking price so i had that money available the next year and chicken it, shit money if you're a vinnie fan yeah not, not nothing <laughs> yeah. on the vinnie scale but because i didn't buy in i had that available for, for some aerosmith stuff and then another aerosmith auction came up and i missed out on stuff and then something else came out of the blue and i had that completely available and it just worked out way better for me especially when the stuff did then leak um, and i got to watch it for free so having done deals um in this realm i have to say villain because that person gave their word and stepped outside a circle of trust. On the other hand, I'm sitting here going, I, you know, I was watching Love. I've never seen that today. Right. And, you know, <laughs> having the exact same response as any normal Kiss fan. So it's a, it's hypocrisy. It's a contradiction. Um, but again, someone broke their word and had a temper tantrum of epic proportions with an agenda still not fully understood. That's caused a whole shitload of collateral damage so while we can all enjoy seeing this stuff there's a lot of good youtube channels that have been taken down a lot of things have been said about people who have nothing to do with it that have been disparaging and damaging so that that is again why i go back to villain because you know the, the person who who leaked it isn't the pariah who sourced it isn't the pariah who is trying to cover their tracks by any means necessary. Um, just remember, that was a voice text. Please excuse the typos. <laughs> too, too, too freaking funny. What else? Someone else posted a very old. This is so incredibly out of date. It was, if you work in the industry, uh, order for stores, then you get to see some titles that are coming for release much sooner than they are announced. And usually that information does not get shared oh. publicly. So someone posted a image that is probably well over a year. I, I'm not sure of the date on it, uh, but it's very, very old. And it listed an off the soundboard Kiss Cruise acoustic title, um, which clearly did not come out in 2022. In case we all miss something, mm -hmm. with the Loomis leaks. Um, but what was your initial reaction to that, Lonnie? You know, having gone on cruises, do you like, dislike the idea? And if you dislike it, what would make it palatable? I think it'd be fun. I think it'd be something um, completely different than the other releases that we've gotten. Um, while I've enjoyed most of the releases, I think that an acoustic, like a, maybe like a compilation of, we don't know what it is. But in my mind, it'd be like it like a like a compilation of the of the acoustic shows done throughout the years. Um, 
And in KISS fashion, we're, we're going to throw in some of the standards in there as well, because that's just what we do. It wouldn't be just all the rare. It wouldn't be like just the rarities that they've done. Mm-hmm. Come on. You know, they're going to they're going to throw in like an acoustic version of Christine 16 and calling Dr. Love and shit like that. But, you know, with the idea of, of putting in like a take me or putting in love her all I can and things like that. Well, that might be fun. And it'd be something that I think I would go back to and listen to um, more than some of your standard off the soundboards. Um, well, while, while I do enjoy them, I still listen to Des Moines and and Donington um, from time to time. I think that 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 would be really fun. And um, I hope that that just I hope that that project wasn't scrapped. And I hope that that's something that still could be could be in the works in the future because I like it. Nice. A, po- a positive response. How about All that? All right. Let's move on to Mark then. <laughs> well, um, well. <laughs> I, I don't know about this idea, to be honest with you. I mean, I don't know if I have so much, I don't know if I have so much a problem with the, the idea itself of releasing a off the soundboard acoustic thing. I just think that it's maybe a little early for that still. Um, because the the reaction that people had when they released, let's say, Virginia Beach, which had a more current lineup, people were not too head over heels on that. But when you know they did like Donington or they did Des Moines, people were much more receptive to it because it's older material. And right now, people are more interested, I think, in that stuff. Like I said, I don't have a problem with them releasing something from the cruise, even an acoustic set. But I think that they should still release a lot more of the stuff that people have been clamoring for first before they get to that point. You know, sure, do it as maybe like the eighth or ninth release, but already as the, you know, fifth or fourth. I mean, come on. I mean, already we're going to, to kiss cruise stuff. I mean, there's a lot of stuff I'm sure they could release before that. So I, I say save it. You know, I say bring it on. The more the merrier. I want as much of the band's catalog as possible um, covered. However, I think had it come out in 2022 in a year that Virginia Beach had, it would have been very poor in terms of its sequencing. And that's the context in which it appears. Um, so I, I don't have a problem with the. Uh, well, with, a, with an acoustic cruise set, preferably one of the earlier ones, when it was still new and different, so that it's not too close to MTV Unplugged. But again, it's a whole different sort of performance and one that had you know multiple days of rehearsals and all that jazz um, going with it. I, again, I, I like the idea, and I'm not too fussed because there were enough, you know, rarities performed early on, you know, before Paul's voice really became a problem, um, or or a noticeable problem. Ken. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I was thinking the same thing, kind of about you know, well, we already have Kiss Unplugged, um, but but there is the uh, Kiss Unplugged. You know, we we know about where there's a lot of uh, other. There's some other songs that were in, you know that they did that weren't part of the the show, that sort of thing, and you know they could have released that uh, as something, but. Uh, for the Kiss Cruise thing, I think they need to wait. Um, I think, aren't they supposed to do a Kiss Cruise acoustic show anyway on the next cruise? And that the last cruise, I thought that's what they were going to do. Um, maybe I'm thinking wrong, but uh, I thought that's what they were going to do. Anyway, I think you wait until the cruises are done, and then you put out a big cruise package. And if you've filmed it and or recorded all these different shows, then you put it like a box for the Kiss Cruise box, something like that, um, and all the different rarities and all the like stuff. It can be shaped like a cruise ship, and you open it up. <laughs> yeah, a wow. sinking ship. Okay. There's, there's it can be shaped like the Titanic. <laughs> the wow. Titanic in front of or, or, wow. And inside's a Kiss <laughs> branded life jacket. The Kiss Titanic. The name of the ship but, will be Dubai. Oh, yeah, yeah. Goodbye. Goodbye, Dubai. Anyway, um, <laughs> the I, that, that's just what I think. I think they should do a, a Kiss Cruise package. Save it. Don't do that. Put There's a lot of other stuff yeah. from the past Fun, to, to put out. Really, seriously, there's a lot more than... I mean, if, if they're just... <laughs> 
they're going after this acoustic set. It just seems like, you know, don't you have more, uh, better yeah, stuff exactly. out there? He must. Uh, either that or they don't. <laughs> um, and they're, you know, scratching for some some other stuff that, oh, yeah, we got that uh, Kiss Cruise stuff we recorded. Again, yeah, is it an early set? Is it a mixture? I agree with Lonnie, though. If they did do it, combine a bunch of the best uh, with some deep, yeah, definitely you got to have deep tracks in there and so on. Um, but uh, again, I, I would just save it, save it for a box. All right, then straight back to you on another question from the board is which Eric Carr lineup should have recorded a live three? Yeah, well, you know, back when uh, they had a live, three albums alive, three albums alive too. And I was thinking, well, they need to do three albums and do a live three. But the problem is there is you had Dynasty Unmasked and The Elder. And that, how are you going to make a live three out of that one? It's not really going to happen uh, like they did with live. You know, you would have maybe a, a two songs or three songs, and then the rest would have to be re-records or... or uh, you know, kind of like material. you know, they had a, like a live two had side four. You'd have one side live and three side studio or something like that. But yeah, I, I was thinking probably around uh, a little bit after Animalize, maybe Asylum, something that you had enough songs that you performed live to to include on 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 all of this, uh, where they did most of the songs and they they got rid of a lot of the '70s stuff. And I don't know which tour had most of that. It could have been a silent tour, maybe, um, around there. I'd probably pick something like that, a silent tour uh, around that era to put in a live three out. Yeah. Lonnie, what do you think? Um, I don't, I don't, I, I think for me it would be after Lick It Up. In between Lick It Up and Animal Eyes, the band was starting to pick up a little momentum with taking off the makeup, um, reinventing themselves. Um, I think the band sounds a whole lot better on the Lick It Up tour than they do on the Animal Eyes tour. Like that Animal Eyes live uncensored is it's it's a tough watch, it's a tough listen for me. Like that's it's not that's not KISS. <laughs> it is KISS, obviously, but it's not you know what I mean. It's not it's not KISS. So uh, but I think the band sounded really good with with Eric Carr and Vinny. And that would have been really tough with Vinny to put out a live album. I get it. But I think a live representation, a, a real good live representation right after the Look It Up tour, gaining a little momentum. Well, let's do what we do best. Let's put out a live album from this lineup on this tour mixed with a bunch of Creature songs and a bunch of Look It Up songs. And then a bunch of our classic um, 70s Kiss songs, I think, would have been a, a final live three right there. Well, Lonnie, you know, the, the best, the great thing about Alive and Alive 2 is they didn't have any crossover songs. They were but Alive all... 3, yeah. But, but we, what we know of Alive that's 3 That's what I was hoping for, for the Alive 3 is have it. all songs that were not on Alive, not on Alive <clears throat> 2. And you I had never, your own group, right? But it I was it was four that. different mus or two different musicians by that point. Yeah. So I don't think the yeah, no, the non repetition makes sense. <clears throat> Mark, yeah. you know, I, I I never liked that idea of like just only doing songs that weren't on the other album because it it doesn't make for a very accurate concert in my opinion. I mean, they don't close the show as shout it out loud. I mean, why like the, why did they do it like that on a live too? Like, give me a break. They always close the show with Black Diamond. Right, so th that not being there seemed totally wrong to me. But that's not what we're talking about. Because they, uh, because they wanted people to keep buying alive and not favor alive too, and have it seen as a replacement for. So you've still got two distinctly separate products. Okay, right. great. But I mean, there has to come a point, and I'd say by live three, obviously, that they would have to abandon that whole theory because, it's, like I said, I, I just think that it's, I'd rather have a real accurate show representation and worrying about like you know 
what you just mentioned, that having two separate things because there's different songs on it. I, I want an accurate representation of the show. Now, for, for me, as much as I love Asylum, I would totally be all for having that as the Alive 3. Uh, everything in my body tells me that the, the only logical answer to this is to do have a live three after the completion of Hot in the Shade. They were back. Lots of there was huge numbers. Their their, their attendance was better. I'm guessing compared to the numbers as they had before, right? As far as audience was concerned, right? Uh, and I, I think that Bruce Kulick was still the better live player with them. And I've always loved that, that that tour. I've always loved the, the concerts that I've seen from that tour. And I don't think there's anything wrong mm -hmm. with what they... I mean, everybody, everybody when they talk about Setlist, they always say that that was one of the best ones that they did. They came back, they started bringing back all their old material and stuff like that. And the biggest complaint everybody had about the earlier ones is that there was not enough of the old material on there, right? So, I mean, I guess it depends on how you're viewing it. If you're viewing it how you guys were talking about the Live 1 and 2, then yeah, maybe a Lick It Up tour would make sense because they didn't play a whole lot of the old stuff anyways during then. So why not make it for that? But I always thought that it, I was, you know, surprised that they didn't do something with the Hot in the Shade tour, mainly because it was Eric's last tour. Why not give give something to, mem you know, in memory of him? What better way to do it than to have an Alive with him featured on it and that tour i think was really good i mean i've i've loved watching that concert tour stuff even this you know the footage that they have on kissology is great the stuff that's leaked that we've seen has been really good as well that that would be my vote he's a villain yeah <laughs> um i almost feel like we've gotten a live three finally with uh, the live in the creatures box set yes and and that I'll take any day over Animalize Alive Uncensored or Animalize Alive Uncensored. Um, where would it make the most sense? Well, looking at their history, again, sorry, I can't help but do that. Um, 86, after the Asylum Tour, they're taking that extra time to put all that effort into writing Crazy Nights, then that would have been a perfect, you know, year to... Put out the put out a live three because then you've mm -hmm. got creatures lick it up animalize and asylum you know you've got plenty of material represented um, that Bruce can absolutely hit a home run on and it should be Bruce in the lineup as far as I'm concerned because uh, he gave so much to that band during his tenure um, I like Mark's idea of they should have as a memorial to him. Um, to Eric to release something mm -hmm. in 91 a live three then which would have made sense to have been something from Hot in the Shade tour but I, I think um, that would have cost too much of the cool stuff from those four studio albums um, in the immediate unmasked period because too many of the classics were coming back in by the end of Crazy Nights and Hot in the Shade so it would have been better as an album Certainly. So, yeah, I, I like Asylum because I love Eric Carr's drum solo, and that really features him well. That's the high point for me in the 80s of his drum solo. But in terms of the set list as well, um, you wouldn't have to hear forever. Mm -hmm. Hide your heart. <laughs> so, I'd, I'd be happy with Rise to it. So that, that's my thought on that. What else do we have here from the board? Did, uh, any of you guys have any topics that had uh, piqued your interest this week? Mm. <laughs> yes, everyone's been on the studio. The uh, live or studio, that poll, right? You didn't say that one? Did yeah, that one? I had that one on there, but then I couldn't find it again. Um, <clears throat> again, It's it, like what you prefer, the, the I guess the live albums versus... You know, or a studio. Um, if you have you mean versions of the songs, you mean like... one or the other kind of thing. Um, if it's just that, I would. I mean, I would say I, I'd want studio because you're going to have all the songs. Um, because not they didn't play every you know song live. They played pretty much the same songs for a long time. Um, so I'd rather have the studio stuff. Um, 
if I had a choice between the two. Well, here's a good one. Did MTV bungle the 1983 Kiss Unmasking special? Uh, it was very staid in terms of um, yeah. JJ. You know, kind of an older... I mean, he's probably younger than all of us <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, yeah. At, at that time. Um, and then just sitting behind a desk with the kind of dissolves from the makeup and mm -hmm. a short interview and boom, that's it. Uh, Lonnie, do you think they could have done it better? Or should have? You know, I think it could have been done differently and more dramatic. Um, it just seemed like they were sitting at a desk for a talk show type thing. Like, <laughs> you know, like they're on the Murray Griffith show or something all of a sudden. And, oh, here's here's our next guest, Kiss. And they are sitting, sitting there with their name tags in front of them. Um, it could have been handled differently, maybe better. But at the same time, they weren't very popular at the time. We have to remember that. Um, they, they weren't exactly just booming off the charts at the time. Creatures had just tanked. Um, so did tour. Right. And they, they were kind of going on a wing and a prayer, thinking well, maybe taking off the makeup is we, we have to play that card at this time. So... I think MTV said, okay, we'll, we'll air this. It didn't get exactly the primetime slot um, with a lot of publicity. They just kind of, here it is type thing. So <laughs> it could have been handled differently, sure. But I think it was, I think MTV actually handled it the right way considering the popularity of the band at the time. Good point. Mark? Yeah, I mean, I think the point that Lonnie makes, that's the main point about this whole thing is th their popularity because at that time they were probably near near the bottom you know like i said that like you said the album did terribly the tour got canceled the big hundred you know u.s city tour that was the big hype that they were doing that got canceled so you know and I i'm actually surprised mtv did it because the long the, one of the things that they were always complaining about is that they always had themselves filmed saying i want my mtv i want my mtv and they would never play it they would never they would send it and they would never use it right so it seemed like mtv wasn't too hip on kiss to begin with which would probably explain the time slot that they got for the you know reveal because i mean most people would probably think to themselves yeah they could have did a much better thing for that you know they could have made it dramatic like how they do now on these kind of reveals where they only show them from the feet up and they slowly go up and they have them talking really mysteriously you know who is this talking now and they go up and then all of a sudden you have them in the makeup and then all of a sudden you can dissolve it you know you can do it really dramatic but like lonnie said they didn't have that sort of star power to to have that done you know what i mean to ask to have that done they were that, that was probably the best that they were offered okay yeah we'll we'll do it you just have to come here sit here and we'll just do a quick you know compare here's you and makeup and then just show you as is which probably I'm sure they were like, really, that's it? That's all you're going to do? But they didn't have the power to do it then, you know? But they didn't have, they had very little choice, I think, at the time. It was either get rid of the makeup and try to restart the band or stay in the makeup. And I think this is the right move to do. I'm sure the way Kiss is, the way Paul and Gene are, they would have liked to, to have been much more grandiose. You know, each guy come out and fireworks would go off around them when they came out with their makeup off. I mean... I can only imagine what they would have wanted, but they didn't have the pull to do it. Yeah, I think both of you nail it on that. It was very businesslike, you know, very unrock and roll, you know, and it's and now the weather. <laughs> I, I, I mean, it, it was more like a boardroom meeting than, yeah. you know, rat, well, <laughs> you and, know. And at the same time, well, here's two members of the band that most of America doesn't even know. Mm-hmm. Especially Vinny was Vinny. there how long? Not even that long in the band, Vinny. You know, right? And most yeah, and, and for and for Eric, Eric since most of his tenure had been outside of the country in Europe in 1980, right. you know, he he doesn't exactly count that much more. You know, no. people would have seen him on a few TV shows in '81, but not much more visibility than Vinny at that point, except the magazines. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, now the weather, Ken. <laughs> yeah, the weather. <laughs> Yeah, I was lucky enough. 
<laughs> Here we go. Yeah. Okay. I was lucky to, you know, to see it live when it happened. But the thing is, I was lucky enough to, I don't know how I even knew about it. Because I know they didn't advertise it big time. You know, I, I think I just caught a commercial or something maybe the day before or so on while watching MTV uh, about, you know, Kiss is going to unmask or whatever. And it's like, what? You know? Ooh, <laughs> that's, so, a, that's a clip that wasn't in the Loomis leak. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, I remember us. It was like uh, in the West Coast. It was in the evening. I don't know if it was like 7 p.m. or 8 p.m. I don't know. It was, it was in the evening, definitely. Um, and so back east, it was, you know, a lot later. Um, so obviously they didn't care. They put in a time slot that not a lot of people probably watch MTV at the time anyway. Um, so I, I, I don't think MTV really cared to tell you the truth. And just to put them behind a table like that is kind of, kind of, kind of strange. Um, yeah, they could have done something more dramatic, you know, they could have, they could have come out in their outfits or the old outfits, or they could have had makeup on and, you know, maybe removed it, but that would kind of been difficult, you know, taking too much time. It could have been like so, a Kool-Aid guy smashing through the wall. Yeah, yeah. And, and the other thing is there's there's some probably KISS fans that are like, I don't care because, you know, Ace and Peter are no longer in the band and you got these new guys, you know, who are these guys uh, kind of thing. So, and they're on the um, FAQ and they're still angry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Pounding their so, fist on the table. What was happening though, I, you know, what was happening was kind of, it was very, you know, interesting to me because I was like, man, I'd never seen them out without makeup. This is the first time I'd seen Gene and Paul and, you know, well, all four of those guys at at that time. I had never seen. I mean, I saw that old Cream magazine thing with, you know, Gina Paul Bad. He's not, but it's not a great picture. And you've seen these little snippets of this or that of, of Paul or Gene in the past, but that was the real thing. And then to see them on there, it was kind of, from that standpoint, it was kind of cool because I was still into the band really heavily um and and it was kind of you know like wow this is that's what he really looks like you know kind of thing you know paul looks like paul gene was like oh wow that's i didn't expect that you know kind of thing <laughs> um but then they played the video then they introduced to look it up and that was cool part of it where you got to see the you know look it up for the first time or hear the song and play the video that that's the thing and it's like, gonna be out on tuesday you know in stores on tuesday so that was all cool. Uh, I enjoyed it from that standpoint. Um, but yeah, looking back on it, they could have made it more rock and roll, like Julian was saying. You know, it was it was a little bit too business like. Yep. Mm -hmm. Well, there we go. That's a bunch of topics from the board for this week. So, you know, I guess we can leave it there. Just a reminder: if you're going to send threats to people, don't use voice to text or iPhone <laughs> autocorrect. You just look like an idiot. Um, very unconvincing. But there we go. What do you think about these topics that we've talked about today? Is Loomis a hero or a villain? When should Alive Three have uh, been released? And uh, the other ones, which. Hopefully you listen to because I can't remember and I don't have my list up in front of me anymore. But for now, from Ken, from Lonnie, Mark, and myself, thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time. Thank you for spending time listening to the KISS FAQ podcast today. All sales are final. There are no refunds. If you'd like, look us up on Facebook or come over to the KISS FAQ message board and discuss the topic we've broadcast today. Don't forget to rate us on iTunes, Spreaker, or wherever you've listened to the show. We hope you'll join us again.